This one's called Letter to the Girl I Was. Dear Courtney, I can't slam anymore without thinking of you. And every time I touch a copy of the book you wrote, I get chills. And I hear a familiar voice in my head say, remember when this all started. And each time I get up to slam, I think about you and the first time you fell in love with words and the way that it felt when they poured from your mouth. It felt just like the first time you tried on grandma's heels and wore a push-up bra. And Courtney, I have the same feelings you did every time I stand up to slam. I still feel your word choice and passion in my writing, and I regret trying to kill you. God, I'm so sorry that I tried to kill you with the pills and with the cuts. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I tied your breasts down before you even got to enjoy having them, and I'm sorry I never let you breathe. Every time I get dressed and worm my way into a binder, I think of you. And how I smothered every routine and dream you ever had. I think about how I scrubbed your face raw the very second you came home from your friend's quinceanera and tried to remove every trace of makeup. And I remember how your lips looked. They were so red from my harsh scrubbing. And I remember being angry because it looked redder than the lipstick you had on before. Courtney, I'm sorry that it took me so long to write to you. I just couldn't gather my thoughts and put them on paper without my words being attached to tears. But now those tears are in my room. And now they come back every time I slam along with you and I haven't killed you. I shouldn't have tried to kill you when I did. Mm -hmm. Your body still sends me monthly reminders in the color red that you exist and I'm sorry it makes me wanna die and I'm sorry it makes me say that I hate you, but it does. It makes me feel like a murderer, plotting the death of an old friend each time I beg my mother for testosterone or look at Packers online, yet I still don't hate you. Because without you, I wouldn't slam. And without you, I wouldn't be. And I'm sorry that I don't tell you that I love you very often or at all, but I want to apologize and make it up to you now before you're destroyed completely. Love, and called, hey God, can you hear me? I'm a five-year-old child on my knees, hands folded, praying for world peace and good health. Hey God, can you hear me? I'm an eight-year-old crying, asking for some sign that my grandmother won't die in surgery tonight. Hey God, can you hear me? I'm 10 now, sick at home in bed, infected welts coat my body, I'm in pain and need relief. Hey God, can you hear me? I'm 12 years old and I'm gay. I'm confused, is this allowed? I don't know who I am anymore. Hey God, can you hear me? I'm 13 and the remnants of razor blade cuts line my wrists. My head is in the toilet, fingers down my throat, throwing up the only food I've eaten this week. Hey God, can you hear me? I'm a 16 year old now, I'm transgender. I'm changing everything and I need direction. Hey God, can you hear me? I'm a lost soul searching for purpose. The songs I once sang have died and the things I relied on have failed me. Hey God, can you hear me? We hate each other. Our coffee cups fly from the trash into our hands and we vomit the liquid back into our cups. The whiskey we spike it with returns to the bottle and you say you love I for the last time. We drive in reverse to my place, our hands creeping slowly away from each other, our heads turning away, and my lipstick becomes darker as the kiss marks on your cheek fade. The car is parked now and we get out, feeling giddy and excited for what's gonna come. And then you hop in your car and you drive in reverse down the street, past the park where we first said you will die. It's called, and I liked it. She told me she loved me, and I believed her. Her calloused hands felt so good on my body, they explored every crevasse, every mole, every freckle, the curves of my breasts and, and my stomach and my hips, the edges of my bones and the softness of my skin, and I liked it. Her salt lace lips pressed into me, my neck, my shoulders, my back, my everything. She planted a trail of kisses down my body, her lips touching every square inch. It's as if she were trying to memorize how I felt beneath her, and I liked it. I liked the way she held me, and the way she whispered in my ear, the way she called me sweetheart, babe, honey, the way she said my name. Her limbs nodded with mine, and we were tied together, laughing, smiling, holding each other, and I liked it. Her voice was soft and rumbly and deep. Every word she spoke was an earthquake, and her tongue was a tremor. It tilted in my mouth, twirling perfectly with mine, her beard rubbed against my cheek and making goosebumps leap from under my skin. And I liked it. And I liked it until I didn't like it anymore. Late nights. Wanting to die isn't beautiful. It's nights spent alone, crying, cutting, writing note after note, struggling to find your parting words. It's hospitals and ID bracelets, 15 minute checks and meds, family meetings and discharge paperwork. It's giving up. 
It's failing classes, sleeping all the time, waiting to wither away. It's poems like this, written in the dark, fueled by fantasy scenes of my own suicide. Mm -hmm. Missing persons. I left her a month ago, but she isn't gone. I thought I saw her yesterday at the grocery store and my throat closed up. Her, my cell phone number changed, but my heart races every time an unknown woman calls. The bruises are still dark, but they are fading, slowly. Her name echoes in my nightmares and my daydreams and my Facebook memories. Ghosts of past conversations linger in my head, never being put to rest. Her favorite song came on the radio last week and I cried. I went to the gynecologist for my yearly exam and I panicked when the doctor touched me. I can't press charges because it would give her the right to confront me. I have my coworker walk me to my car every day in case she comes to my job. I can't escape because the scars won't fade and neither will the memories. I may have left her, but she will never be. What's an enemy? Emmett. My name is Emmett. I don't care what my records say, my name is Emmett. I know I look like a Courtney, but my name is Emmett. I still have breasts and a vagina and ovaries and a lot of estrogen, but my name is Emmett. I'm a nerdy queer trans boy and my name is Emmett. I like to wear button downs as well as dresses, and my name is Emmett. I have one foot out of the closet and one ready to turn and run, but my name is still Emmett. Teachers call me Courtney. Parents call me Courtney, friends call me Courtney, but my name is still Emmett. I'm awkward and nervous and I just want to use the boys' bathroom. My name is Emmett. I'm a boy with a period and a feminine figure and a chest bound too tightly and my name is Emmett and my name will always be Emmett. As time goes on. In 2005, there was a six-year-old girl who wanted to know why she couldn't use the boys' bathroom. In 2007, there was an eight-year-old girl with brand new breasts who wanted to wear boys' clothes all the time. In 2009, there was a little 10-year-old girl who sat at the boys' lunch table every single day. In 2011, there was a 12-year-old girl who would sneak into the boys' line when walking from class to class. In 2012, there was a 13-year-old girl who just got her period and hated her long hair. In 2013, there was a 14-year-old girl who attempted suicide because she couldn't stand living in her body. In 2014, there was a 15-year-old girl who told the world that she was a boy. In 2015, there was a girl who claimed to be a boy who was assaulted on the school bus for being who she is. In 2015, there was a used-to-be girl binding her chest in their every outfit. In 2015, there was a used-to-be girl who changed his name to Emmett. In 2015, there was a brand new boy who could finally be himself. In 2015, there was a 16-year-old boy who finally felt okay. In 2015, there was a 15-year-old boy who survived. It was called Last Supper. The 702 train from the city was five minutes late, so I was too, and she was angry. Five minutes late means five more minutes until dinner's on the table, but I forgot to buy milk, so I couldn't make the Alfredo sauce. The chicken was dry and the pasta too soft, according to her. Her hands were not so soft. Her fists collided with my face, painting a night sky on my skin. Her voice vibrated through the house and the sound of broken dis dishes didn't mask it. Whore, cunt, bitch, I was bleeding. Her words cut me at the same time her nails did. They dug into my neck and I screamed. I wasn't supposed to scream. And this one I wrote especially for today, it's called hashtag me too. Me too because men don't get raped, because I'm a man. Because men aren't victims, because men aren't survivors, because it doesn't happen to us. Me too, because I didn't report my rape, because I couldn't, because it would give her the right to confront me. Me too, because if I had reported, I would have to be a woman, had to be Courtney, had to be not me. Me too, because my rapist was a woman. Me too, because my rapist was a trans woman. And me too, because I can't say that out loud without labeling every other trans woman in the whole world. Me too, because not every trans woman is a rapist. Me too because I was only 16. Me too because I couldn't tell anyone, because I couldn't admit it to myself. Me too because I've been silenced. Me too because I'm tired of being silenced. Me too because it happened to me too. Thank you.